percent. Let's talk to our panel. Seth Basham's with us, Managing Director, Equity Research at Wedbush Securities, and Garrett Nelson, Vice President, Senior Equity Analyst at CFRA Research. Seth, um, what stood out to you? Just wasn't good enough? Yeah, expectations along the buy side were low going into the quarter, but we still saw a couple areas of disappointment. You know, same store sales in the U.S. were flattish. At the same time, we saw a little bit of extra pressure than expected on gross margin and underperformance on EBIT growth. So there's an EPS miss associated with that. So all things considered, it was a modest miss in a sector that's under a lot of pressure as low income consumers continue to defer discretionary purchases. And because AutoZone primarily serves that customer segment, they're seeing a fair amount of pressure. Do you feel like that, before I get to Garrett, do you feel like that's a one-off? I know you have a $3,200 price target. It's at 3021 today. Um, do you feel like this pressure or, or the margin squeeze was, was sort of a one-off and they have upside potential? How will they get to that 3200 Yeah, well, there are still headwinds ahead for the company. We're waiting for consumer sentiment to turn. We're seeing lower gas prices, which could help in that regard. Uh, but they also have some profitability headwinds from foreign currency is also also from LIFO. So the long term business model and the algorithm for earnings growth in the low double digits is still intact in our view. But in the near term, there are still a number of headwinds. All that being said, they have a very resilient business model and we think is a very good cash flow model that continues to return cash to shareholders. And we like the business long term. Yeah, and look, most of the folks I speak with still feel that AutoZone is the leader in the group. Uh, they always seem to pick AutoZone over advanced auto parts, for example, and some of the others. Garrett, you have a $3,300 target. I'd love to hear, Garrett, some of your thoughts. Sure, we're a little more positive on this release here. Yes, it was uncharacteristic for AutoZone to miss. If you look back, actually, the last time they missed uh, on EPS and for a quarter was way back in 2018. So this is a company with an excellent track record of execution. Um, you know, looking across the retail space, it's not surprising to see some softness. Uh, you know, it's not AutoZone, but we're seeing it across the space. And for a company, uh, AutoZone just posted 9% revenue growth, 11% um, year over year EPS growth, um, that's relatively strong, you know, compared to other companies in the retail space. As you mentioned, they have this strong secular tailwind of the record high U.S. vehicle age, 12.6 uh, years old now. That's a lot of vehicles on the road in the U.S. in need of frequent repairs and maintenance. And then we think they have uh, a lot of growth potential internationally. If you look, only about 13 percent of their total store count uh, was outside the U.S., mainly in Mexico, with some stores also in Brazil. Uh, internationally, their same-store sales growth was up 16% in, um, in those stores versus only 0.4% domestically. So we like the uh, the runway that they have uh, internationally uh, in the coming years. And they're also uh, one of the best companies uh, in terms of buybacks, bought back 90% of their total share count since 1998. I'm glad you mentioned, because uh, I knew it was 12 years. Thank you for the, um, the specific number. It's 12.6 years old. People are really keeping those cars in the driveway longer. Um, that being said, Seth, do you think we'll see that trend continue? Because the prices have come down. I know they're still high, but have come down for new and used cars. EV cars, will they last as long? Will they need the parts? I mean, what's the vision in the next five years, Seth? Yeah, in our view, we think we'll continue to see the average age of vehicles in the U.S. inch higher uh, by a very small amount over the next five years. And we'll see, uh, you know, production start to level off here in the mid 15 to 16 million uh, range per year. And that will help support uh, continued growth in the car park and the average age of vehicles. So we think that's a good tailwind to the industry. Uh, all that being said, when we look at the sweet spot of vehicles in the five to eight year old age cohort, we'll likely see a deceleration in growth in that cohort. And that's important because that's where most of the parts that AutoZone sell go into in terms of the types of vehicles.
Yeah, and as far as the EV purchases, um, you know, they clearly had slowed some. Mary Barra over at General Motors was making that commitment to the year 2036 and light vehicles all being EVs. Um, final thoughts here, Garrett, on the industry overall. Are people going to keep their cars a long time or are we going to see some transitions too? Uh, we, we do think so. We think that that's a trend that's going to continue. We, we see the uh, average vehicle age continuing to move higher here, at least over the next few years. And I think, you know, some of the concerns regarding EVs have actually moderated uh, just given the growth in hybrids uh, that we've seen. Um, the hybrid market is both larger and growing faster than the EV market uh, in the U.S. And hybrids, of course, require more maintenance uh, and than uh, than electric vehicles, so we would argue actually the outlook uh, over the intermediate long term aftermarket uh, auto aftermarket demand has actually improved a little bit versus the outlook a year or two ago. Yeah, and Seth, I'll give you the last ten seconds. Anything you'd like to add in? I do reiterate that AutoZone has a very resilient business model. They're one of the leaders in the space. The long-term growth algorithm for the company is still intact. They're just facing near-term headwinds right now. And it makes sense to yeah. uh, buy this stock if uh, you have a view that's 12 months or longer. Yeah. All right. Well, now it's at 29.93. So it has moved higher since my last check in my quote that I said. Seth. Garrett, thank you. Seth Basham, Wedbush, Garrett Nelson, CFRA. Great to see you both. Thank you so much.